Welcome to Civil Engineering Fanatics. Today, we will discuss the design stress strain curve of concrete and steel, which is the basis for the design theory behind reinforced concrete structures. We know that most of the structures are designed based on limit state method, that is LSM. The design assumptions and the related equations are based on this idealized stress strain curve of concrete and steel, which is as suggested by the Indian Standard Code IS 456 2000. Before we move to the stress strain analysis, let's have an overview of concrete and steel reinforcement. We know that concrete is weak in tension and strong in compression. While steel is strong in tension, we incorporate it in concrete to impart its tensile strength to concrete. Hence, we have reinforced concrete structure. So, in stress strain analysis, concrete is tested in compression, that is, by using compression test, and the steel is tested for tension, that is, using tensile test. So, stress strain curve of concrete is as per the compression test, and that of steel will be as per the tension test. Now, let's study the stress strain curve of concrete and steel in detail. Design stress strain curve of concrete, idealized stress strain curve of concrete. The idealized stress strain curve of concrete is as prescribed by IS 456 2000. The curve represents the elastic and post elastic behavior of concrete and it is used for the design of concrete structures. This curve shows the stress strain curve of concrete with compressive strength of FCK called the characteristic compressive strength. The test sample used here is a 150 mm cube sample and the curve is an idealized stress strain curve with two shapes parabola as well as a rectangular shape. In the curve, you can see the stress increases with the strain until a point of strain value equal to 0.002. Beyond this point, the stress remains constant and the strain increases to a value of 0.0035. Till OA, it is a parabolic curve and beyond A, it is straight. So the curve obtained is a parabolic rectangular curve. This first graph is based on a value of FCK. But in real structures, we don't completely use a concrete sample like a concrete tube. The real structures vary. So we are reducing the FCK value to a lower value that is 0.67 of FCK and we are testing that. So when we design a full structure, the compressive strength is reduced as well as it is influenced by the size and shape of the structure designed. Hence we get a lower graph below the first graph. And the obtained curve is as shown. This curve can be called as an idealized curve for concrete. In addition to the first two curves, in real structures, in the design of real structures, as well as based on the limit state theory, we always consider a partial safety factor, not just for the loads, but also for the material used. We have partial safety factor for loads, partial safety factor for concrete, partial safety factor for steel. So in case of limit state method, the partial safety factor is 1.5 for concrete. So we have to divide the strength value by a partial safety factor to finally determine the design stress value. 0.67 FCK by a partial factor of 1.5 which gives 0.45 FCK. Now the stress strain analysis for a concrete sample of strength equal to 0.45 FCK is shown in green color. So this is the design curve that we use for concrete. So these are various cases how a stress strain curve for different concrete with strength are studied. But finally, we use a reduced strength value of 0.45 FCK, which is also called as the design strength value for designing concrete structures. So, in all the three cases, the ultimate strain value is reached at 0.0035. You can ask whether the strain value can exceed 0.0035. Yes, there are chances it may exceed, but we are idealizing as per various studies, we are idealizing it as 0.0035 and it is being recommended on Indian Standard Code so that we can develop the designs based on this particular graph. So to conclude, in the design problem for concrete, we take the design strength as 0.45 FCK. This is the design stress and the ultimate strain value will be 0.0035. Now the ultimate strength of concrete is assumed to reach at a strain value of 0.0035 for all the concrete sample and based on which we actually proceed our design. So these two values for concrete design is very important. This will be used again while we develop the moment of resistance of a reinforced concrete structure. This strain value is the basis on which we actually derive various formulas for beam design. Now, similar to concrete, we need to analyze steel so that we also get a standard design stress as well as a design strain value for steel rebars that is used for concrete structures. Design stress strain curve for reinforcing steel. 
As you know, two types of steel are used for reinforced structures, mild steel and HYSD steel. In the case of steel, the yield strength of steel is the characteristic strength of steel, which is represented by Fy. Let's first analyze the mild steel stress strain curve. Here, until a point, the stress is directly proportional to strain. That point is called as the elastic limit. Here, like concrete, there is no influence or shape of size of the mild steel. Hence, we don't have to have a reduced idealized curve for steel. Steel is elastic as well as linear in nature and this curve forms the characteristic curve for mild steel. But we actually considered a partial safety factor in the limit state method of design. So as we divided the strength value of concrete by a partial safety factor, we need to divide the strength value of steel by a partial safety factor and the value is 1.15 as per Indian standard code. So we divide Fy by gamma S, which is a partial safety factor for steel, which is 1.15 and we get the design stress value as 0.87 Fy and this will reduce the graph. For 0.87 Fy strength, the graph is reduced to a lower value that is a design curve. We consider a lower value of design strength in actually designing to bring the structure in a safe side. This curve forms the design curve. The yield point of the steel can be obtained from the graph. The yield point A dash, we know that the modulus of elasticity E is equal to yield stress by yield strain. Then yield strain can be given as yield stress divided by modulus of elasticity. The yield stress at that point is 0.87 Fy divided by ES. The modulus of elasticity for steel is 2 into 10 raised to 5 megapascal and hence we get the strain value as 0.87 Fy plus ES. Design stress strain curve for HYST steel bars. The stress strain curve for HYST bars is shown. There is no specific yield point for HYST bars similar to that is the case in mild steel. So the stress corresponding to a strain of 0 0.002 is known as the yield stress for HYST bars. As shown, the stress corresponding to that particular point will be obtained as the yield stress. Now, we need to determine the strain value corresponding to that. We know that curve after 0 0.002 strain is almost similar to the graph that is obtained for mild steel. The stress is 0.87 Fy in that linear straight curve at A dash. If you consider this highlighted portion, in both cases it is almost similar. So the strain value in mild steel can be considered here, which is 0.87 Fy by ES. So if we consider the bottom portion first strain as O1 as 0 0.02 and 1 to 2 is a strain value of 0.87 Fy by ES that is obtained from the uh, stress strain curve of mild steel, the total strain from O to 1 will be the strain value at the yield stress point A dash. So at A dash, we have the stress value 0.87 Fy in the design curve and the corresponding strain at that particular point will be the sum of the O1 strain plus 1 2 strain. Hence, we get the total strain sigma y as 0 0.002 plus 0.87 Fy divided by ES. The stress corresponding to that point will be Fy which is 0.87 Fy. This is the design stress and the design strain that is being used for HYSD bars. So one thing that you have to keep in mind is that the strain value that is used for HYSD bars that is actually obtained from the graph is used for all grades of steel. Even though the strain value obtained for mild steel is this, we don't use this. The value of sigma y for HYSD bars is used for all grades of steel. This is because the Indian standard code requires or specifies uniform criteria for all the grades of steel because we want uh, the steel to yield at ultimate limit of strain. Now, what are the advantages of yielding steel at ultimate strain? During ultimate strain, the failure of the reinforcement bars will be ductile in nature. Having a ductile failure of uh, reinforcement bar or steel helps us to warn about the impending collapse that is to occur and it helps us to take necessary precautions. It shows a sign of failure before it undergo a complete uh, collapse of the building or the structure. Why? Uh, when we design steel reinforcement bars or when we develop the design uh, equation for steel reinforcement bar, the strain value taken will be sigma is equal to 0 0.002 plus 0 0.87 Fy divided by ES. And the stress value will be 0.87 Fy. Actually, I mentioned two values. That is the stress, design stress and design strain value for concrete. Similar to that, we also have the design stress value that is 0.87 Fy for steel and the design strain value as 0 0.002 plus 0 0.87 Fy divided by ES. Now, if we compare both the stress strain curve for concrete and steel, in the first case, we apply the partial safety factor for concrete at all the stress levels. 
treatment. But in case of steel, the partial safety factor is applied only on the inelastic region, that is after A dash. This is because in case of concrete, the modulus of elasticity of concrete is given by the formula 5000 root of FCK. Here, the modulus of velocity of concrete is dependent on the characteristic upper C strength. So it is it have a high influence through what? But in case of steel, modulus of elasticity in elastic region as well as in non-elastic region. But in case of steel, the modulus of elasticity within the elastic limit and after the elastic limit, that is in the inelastic region, it is 2 into 10 raised to 5 megapascal and it is not influenced by the yield stress of the steel. So we apply the partial safety factor only in that inelastic region. In apply partial safety factor only for the non-linear portion of the stress in the steel. Now to understand where these values are used, consider the cross-section of a beam with the depth D and width B. Now the neutral axis being drawn as NA and the topmost portion above the neutral axis will be the compression zone and the bottom portion will be tension zone and in the tension zone we have steel reinforcement. Now we have to find out the design formula or the moment of resistance formula of this cross-sectional beam uh, to proceed our design. So here, if we draw the strain diagram, the topmost fiber of the beam cross-section will be subjected to a higher compression value, a higher value, and when it goes down, the compression goes on decreasing. And at the point of neutral axis, the compression becomes zero, and the tension is also zero at that particular point. When it goes down, down the neutral axis, tension strain starts to increase, and we get a maximum value of tension at the bottom fiber. So when you look into the beam, uh, bending of beam, you see topmost fiber is subjected to higher compression and the bottommost uh, fiber will be subjected to higher tension. Now, we already studied the maximum compressive strain experienced by concrete will be 0 0.0035 and that value is written on the topmost fiber value that is 0 0.0035. Now, if you draw the stress value, stress diagram of this cross section, topmost motion will be having the higher compressive strength of concrete. When it comes down to neutral axis, the compressive stress is zero at neutral axis. Below the neutral axis, there is only tensile stress and that is experienced at the bottommost portion. As per the stress strain curve of concrete, we know the maximum stress will be 0.45 FCK. Now, when it comes to the stress strain curve of mild steel or HYST steel bars, we know the design stress will be 0.87 FI, which is the maximum tensile stress and that is being drawn at the bottom. So in future, please remind these two values regarding the design stress and design strain in the case of concrete as well as for steel. Next video will be regarding the limit state method of reinforced concrete design and the first set of limit state method is certain assumptions and these assumptions mention the standard strain as well as stress value that will be discussed in our next video. If you like this video, let us know by liking, sharing and subscribing to our channel, Civil Engineering Fanatics.